The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. All discussion is limited to publicly available information and should not be interpreted as legal, professional or financial advice. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license nor provide any financial services. Before making investment decisions, you should obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Hello, my name's James Wrigley. I'm a financial advisor and one of the principals of Melbourne-based financial planning firm, First Financial. I've been a long-term listener and contributor to the Ensemble Group and podcast, picking up some amazing nuggets of gold over the years. And through this podcast and the people that I'm able to speak to and interview, hopefully I can continue to deliver some of those nuggets of gold to you. First Century Investors Believe actively targeting Australia's growth engine. High quality growing companies listed on the ASX is the secret to beating the market. Since 1993, every wholesale fund managed by its Australian equities growth team has outperformed the share market over the long term. They believe high quality growing companies can power tax effective, geared, X20 and concentrated portfolios. Thinking about new ways to target Australian share market growth Think first, send your investors. Past performance not indicative of future performance. Net of fees as at August 2024. Hello, welcome back to another episode of the podcast. I'm speaking with Paul Brown from Wealth21. Now, you're up in Budrum on the Sunshine Coast, aren't you, Paul? That's right, James. Yeah. And thanks for the opportunity for a chat. Thanks for thanks for joining me. Um, we both did a did a bit of work with Baz Gardner a, a, a number of years number of years back now. But good of you to spend some time to have it have a chat with me. As I was saying before we before we pressed record, you're you're kind of owned and operated your business for for quite a length of time now. Um, a, a lot of people that listen to Ensemble, a lot of the guests that I've had on in in, in more recent times, you know, some of them are three or four months into owning and operating their own businesses, whereas you're you're been at it for some time. Can you tell us a little bit about Wealth Twenty One and your kind of journey in, in in owning the business? And we'll we'll focus in on a couple of things as as we as we talk through it. Sure, sure. Well, um, actually, um, going back a little way. I mean, I, I got a maths degree. I did mm-hmm. actuarial studies, um, and I didn't uh, didn't fully qualify as an actuary, but I used to work in large corporate super. Um, for I had I had fourteen years in the in the corporate world. Some of yeah. that in Sydney, some of it in Brisbane. Um, but I I decided that um, uh, I guess I wanted to work for myself. I, I guess um, I just wanted to be self employed. I had six managers in my last year in the corporate world, and and uh, I guess I just um, felt that time was right to to work for myself and yes. and uh, and financial advice back in 1998 so that's a long time ago so 1998 was a relatively new profession and I actually do remember doing a personality profile and and they said uh, you're not the profile of a financial advisor because in 1998 it was much more of a a sales um, driven occupation but I always felt that providing advice would be valuable so so yes, yeah, so I pretty much um, my wife and I we packed in our corporate careers in Sydney and we moved to the Sunshine Coast. Um, first, son, uh, first um, son. I got two two boys, but yeah. first um, son on the way. And so yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a sea change, but but we love living on the Sunshine Coast. So um, so that was good. But we pretty much started from scratch and yeah. purchased a client um, business off a, a lady who was retiring in two thousand. Um, and and so yeah, we've been running out of Budrum for twenty twenty five years now, and um, and so it's been a, a fun journey. But as you know, James, the professions changed a fair bit over mm. that, that time, and um, and you know, in some respects, I'm kind of uh, I mean, I didn't really like the journey we've had politically over the last ten years, but I think. I think um, I've always really considered it uh, a really worthy profession, and I think that you know, moving forward, I'm pr- feeling pretty optimistic about the future for yeah. advice. Um, um, so I realise my time in advice is is uh, limited. I just turned sixty this year, so um, but I um, but I still love what I do, and yeah. um, and I think it's really valuable. Yeah. So you still got a few more years in you yet. Yeah, yeah, I, I really enjoy. Um, I'm enjoying it as much as ever, actually. And and um, 
I'm kind of, even though I'm older generation, I kind of love the technology and um, and I really, uh, I kind of get excited about um, where things are going in terms of um, advice. I know it's a it's a personal business, but but technology is such a powerful tool for making um, you know advice um, just improving the quality of advice. So so yeah, it's a, it's a pretty um, interesting time at the moment. Can you talk a little bit about the makeup of the business in terms of like staff and and that kind of thing? Like, is it small? Is it big? Have you have you had various iterations over the years? Like, what, what, what's that like now? Yeah, so at the moment, the, there's actually only two of us. I mean, at various times, I've had uh, up to four or five staff, but yeah. we um, we sort of went through a point where, uh, like, I guess five years ago, we started, like, we, we reduced the number of ongoing advice clients. Um, we tried to introduce as much technology. Um, so, yeah, there is literally only myself. Um, yeah. sole advisor and and I have one um, um, like she's a practice manager CSO but uh, she's been with me for over 10 years does an excellent yeah. job um, been super lucky actually over my past 25 years I've only had a half dozen staff and and like stability is really important when you run a small practice yeah fantastic and I've quite deliberately kept it quite small and and personal um, because like I really think um, financial advice um, it, it, it's a personal business and you want to be able to give that personal service so and also you know in my corporate career at times I was managing 25 30 people and and it's just not fun uh, managing that style of organization but keeping my practice small um, means that it stays personal for the client and it's also easier uh, and more fun for me to manage. The downside of that, of course, is that there are um, challenges with running a practice that's small. Um, you don't have scale. And, and obviously, we're, we're sort of going through a bit of a phase now where we need to grow because over the next, um, I mean, some of your listeners won't be thinking about transitioning to retirement, but but it's on my um, it's on my sort of radar that I need to work out the the new advisor who will eventually take over from uh, from me. Um, even yes. though I think I don't know that I'll actually fully retire for a while, but I'll definitely scale back and and um, and so managing that transition. Um, is uh, is really important, you know, for for me and and for Kylie who works with me. So you'll need to so you'll need to at some point find an advisor, grow an advisor. You'll have to do something in that realm to take over. And and, and do you think so? So the growth that you're referring to is that is that kind of growth in client numbers or just growth in staff? In that you'll have to get another person to to work through to be an advisor. Yeah, yeah. Well, like a lot of advisors at the moment, we're going through a fair bit of growth because it's like. There's quite a lot of uh, demand for, yeah, yeah. for advice at the moment, um, and so um, so yeah. So I'm getting to the point where capacity is an issue. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of other advisors are like that as well. So I need to to um, and and we want to sort of continue to grow um, at a sustainable level as well. But I will eventually get to a point where I'll need to bring in an associate advisor. Although I mean. Chatting to some other advisors about the PY option, and and um, and I know there's a few of oh, um, like the PY numbers are growing, yeah. Um, and so that's definitely an option that I'm considering at the moment as well. You know that that concept is now becoming um, a little bit. You know, I guess it's been in place for a couple of years now. So, yeah. so yeah, so that's definitely something I'm thinking about as well. Did you ever so you know you you mentioned you had four or five staff at one stage and so forth? Did did you ever have any other advisors or with, or have you only you've you've only ever been the advisor and have various support staff? Yeah, so so my wife also or she was an advisor. Um, yeah. She's not an advisor anymore. So yeah. um so and she wasn't really going to be my succession plan, of course, either because <laughs> we're for the same age. But doesn't quite but, work. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so she was an advisor for you know um some of those years. Okay. Um, so yeah, yeah, but she's sort of opted out. She did a fascia exam, but she's um she's not she, she's still working, but in another role now, not in advice. Yeah. So you you mentioned four or five years or so ago, you you reduced the client numbers down on on purpose for whatever was whatever was yeah. going on. So has that come down? But now it's 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 kind of coming back up again. Yeah, how, yeah, how that's you, right. How are you dealing with that? 
Yeah, I, I mean, at the moment, it's um, we're, we're going quite well. We've got a, a sort of, uh, I guess we've improved our process for yeah. dealing with new clients a lot because, you know, I guess 10 or 15 or 10, 15 years ago, we had a mature, mature client base. So we're very much um, focused on the ongoing advice. And we did take on new clients, but not very many. Yeah. Um, whereas now we've really worked on our our processes for um, you know bringing on new clients, and and um, and so you know that and and there's also demand, like um, you know, so we needed we needed to be better at it. Like I felt as though ten years ago we were really good at looking after our existing clients, and we want to continue to be that today, but. But we weren't so good at bringing on new clients, but we are we are much better at that onboarding process now, which I think is a good thing. Yeah, it, and is that the improvement there? Is that is that a bit process? Is that a bit technology driven? Can you explain like why you're feeling things are better now than what they were? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I had a very clunky process for new clients in the past. So so now with technology, like um, I mean, we use Xplan. I mean, the wizards. All of those sorts of things. I remember part of my role when I was in the corporate world as well. I, I used to do process design, so I'm very um, I like processes to be effective and and efficient. And technology is a tool um, to enable that to happen. So I just feel that technology now has enabled us to be so much better at at, at um, you know providing that initial advice and that first year of advice, the implementation, which is so important. I just feel we're so much better at it now because the technology uh, has um, has allowed us to do that. Yeah. Uh, what, what type of numbers are we talking like? What, what did you bring your ongoing client numbers down to before yeah. it's grown a bit more in more recent years? Yeah. So so our ongoing, ongoing client numbers reduced from probably 200 to about 110. Um, yeah, okay. And we've got – and, you know, when you look at some of the benchmarks that produce, you know, the average – the average, you know, you're looking at maybe, um, you know, 120 to 130 ongoing advice clients per advisor. Well, people are stretching that number out now, and, yeah. and you know, like we've got a, a target, for example, to to have 150 ongoing advice clients um, by next by next June, the middle of next year, and we're pretty much on target to get that. But but that means we have to be good. Are bringing on new clients. So, see, I think um, technology enables us to provide a, a better quality service to a larger number of clients. There is a limit, though, because at the end of the day, you can only sort of have so many relationships. But yeah, I exactly. think, you know, the change for me over the last um, six months, six to 12 months, is that I realize I need to be able to look after more people. And the way we do that is we have um, more efficient processes and better technology. Something that I'm kind of trying to grapple with in, in my own mind is to, you do said, you know, there's, there, there, ultimately there's a limit of how many meetings you could do a day. Like you're only one yeah. person. Yeah. Uh, you, you theoretically could spend your whole day doing client meetings and you might do three or four or five or six or however long a client meeting goes for you. But but you're going to cap out now. Yeah, you could have systems in the back end that you just spend all day in meetings, and then Microsoft Teams is recording it, and Copilot spits out this stuff, and you've got support stuff and all the rest of it. But at the end of the day, there's a limit to how many how many meetings you 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 can do. What? How are you like? How are you structuring your day now in terms of it? like how many meetings you're doing versus? time spent on file notes and, and on all the other things that you need to do outside of actually yeah. working directly with a client. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I, I guess the way we're structured at the moment, we we have, um, like we plan to do two meetings a day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. Yep. Because, you know, when you think about it, you've kind of got an hour either side of that meeting where you've got things to do, either preparing for the meeting or or, or, or writing writing notes and and you know we're looking at technology for you know writing file notes as well. I'm not the best typist in the world, but um, but you know that we can look at things like that to save time. But but realistically, I can probably only do about two meetings a day. And also, you know, I know Kylie sort of schedules in days where I don't have any meetings because I just need to catch up 
of, yeah. um, on reports. So, so when you do those numbers over, a, you know, like allowing for annual leave, there's a limit to the number of meetings that you can you can actually have. So therefore, yeah. you're right, James. It just caps out the number of clients you can you can you know realistically look after. So, yeah. How are you? How are you dealing with the like some of the mechanics of financial advice in terms of ROAs and they're running SOAs and all the rest of it. Do, do, between you and Kylie, do you, like, do, do you do that internally? Is it is it some outsource? What? Do you, how are you dealing with it? Yeah, yeah, we we have outsourced in the past, but yeah. but we've um, we've really got. I mean, what the the wizards that that people are be familiar with. Some of those wizards, um, I've really, uh, or we've really worked hard to sort of try and you know get our heads around how to to produce SOAs, you know, more efficiently. So I'm currently not outsourcing. Um, yeah. So we're outsourcing the the power planning, but but we definitely have in the past, and 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 that's been really helpful. Um, so and I may consider that in in the future as well. I've never actually quite got my head around uh, like having um, like a, a VA, a virtual assistant. But I know a lot of advisors have had a, quite a bit of success at that as well. So definitely something that I've had discussions with and exploring. Maybe I'm a little bit old school. I like I like to have someone in the office that we can chat about. But you know, like as you know, Microsoft Teams makes the world a smaller place now. You yeah, can, exactly. you know, um, it's we're fun. we're at opposite ends of the country right now talking, and, it, and, it, and it's working okay. <laughs> yeah, is it, that is that. So that kind of leads me on to the, the maybe the next bit that I want to talk about with you. I. Are most of your clients local to you? you know, in and around the Sunshine Coast, is is it spreading a little bit further and wide now with the use of Teams and Zoom and and the, and the like? Yeah, I mean the vast majority of um, our clients are on the Sunshine Coast. Um, yeah. I, I do have um, with the practice that I purchased, to, you know, twenty five years ago, there were some Bundaberg clients in there, so I do go up to Bundaberg. I always love going up there. It's a really nice part of the world and. So I go up there um, two or three times a year, and I, I'll have like four or five client meetings on uh, over uh, each day for a couple of days, and come back with a fair bit of work. But it's always good to visit Bundaberg. But but um, the vast majority of our clients are on the Sunshine Coast, and I have some in Brisbane and and you know and, and other parts of Queensland. But you know, very much um, on the Sunshine Coast mostly. Yeah, and th- those. The, the the business that you acquired before you know twenty twenty odd years ago, and you're still seeing some of those clients now. How, how old are those clients now that you that you see? Like were they young or were they like retired at that stage and they're in their mid eighties and beyond? Yeah, yes. Um, some of them were younger, obviously, when I first um, took them on. It's um you know um I guess that's kind of an interesting question though, James, because um it's actually quite a privilege. Mm. to to have clients for that period of time because you know when you think about it you're you're guiding them through you know the the final um you know the final years of their life and and obviously you know some of our clients have passed away sadly or yeah. or moved into care aged care but you know we we're still really proud of the work that we do and it's kind of as i say we we sort of view it as a bit of a privilege to um to be able to guide them through their their final years. Um, mm. I think that's and give them that peace of mind in retirement. I mean, um, it's sort of one of the things that I learned. See, I was an, a numbers guy, but <laughs> I soon realised that what we really do is we we give people peace of mind and and um and you know and we show them that we care. And so it's not really how much you know that's important. It's how much you care. Uh, yeah. And and so yeah, that that's really been the thing that I guess has changed for me when I started. I didn't realize that. I thought I thought, oh, numbers. I'm um, I like numbers. This will be a good job for me. But actually, it's it's you know um, the really um, important thing is is how we've helped people um, you know through their final years, and it's and you know and, and Kylie's very close to some of our older clients as well. So you know it's. Um, it's really, um, you know, good to be able to help people. Was it was that a challenge for your personality? Like you said at the start, you know, you did that kind of personality testing thing, and you, then you kind of went down the the, the route of the, the the numbers and and actuarial studies and and, and those kind of things. Yeah. Um, 
typically that doesn't line up with the with the people person personality. Yeah, was that a stretch for you in the early years, or 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 was it or it was yeah. fine? You, you dealt with it. Yeah, yeah, I I guess so. I mean, um, you know, I I think. I th- yeah, it's a really good question, actually, because I I, I did come from a like a, a technical background, yeah. but I guess over the years I've I've just um you know I, I still consider myself to be a kind-hearted person and wanting to help people. So <laughs> so yeah, so I um I, I guess I just learned that over the period of time. It's it's what they call the soft skills of, yes. of what we do. I'm always kind of fascinated about. Um, some people in the past have said to me that I, I would have enjoyed being a psychologist because I I kind of get fascinated with how people make decisions or like you know the um, we have lots of fun sometimes talking to people about their investor behaviour like why do we want to buy an asset that that has gone up like fifty percent whereas but it's sort of like the investor behavior that that we learn about and um and so we help people to sort of think about things logically because often people make investment decisions based on emotions and we we can sort of sit back and say well let's think about this logically let's look at some research and 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 so that's kind of fun as well just looking at trying to help people you know make better decisions based on 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 the logic of the thing rather than just the emotional thing so you, uh, yeah. you, you're clearly good at it if you if you've owned and operated your business for for so long. So yeah. you know, w- whether it was tough or not in the earlier earlier years, you've 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 kind of come to terms with it. Uh, it it's interesting that this bit about this kind of psychology thing. I I get it from time to time. You get you know you you work with particularly newer clients ca- ca- going through the process with you. I think that they don't appreciate what they're going to be going through, the conversations, what they're going to be feeling as a result mm. of of talking mm. to you. Um, it is it is a real it is a real privilege there as you, as you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, do you do you find when you talk to some, some, some new clients? I know it comes up in some of my conversation. I'm interested in your input. You now you're talking about the privilege of working with some of these older clients for quite so long, and you know maybe they're passed away now. But you know you're, you're 20 plus years working with them. Do, do you think that clients? realize when they first come to see you how long some of the existing client relationships have been around for um uh yeah i think i i think so i mean i mean we have some client events um from time to time and so some of our clients know each other have got to know each other um yeah. so yeah i think um and also because we're in we've been in the same community for such a long time i mean um i guess we have a presence in the town uh Budrum's bigger now than it used to be when we moved here but but yeah i think um clients generally know that we've been looking after some of our clients for 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 quite some time so yeah yeah but so so even if they're just coming to see you for the first time they've probably known about you and the business or they know someone that's that's been working with you for a period of time yeah yeah the vast majority of our clients are referrals from um friends or associates and and i mean and also you know, we're working with the next generation of some of our clients as well. Yeah. I mean, that um, obviously happens when you're in business for a little while. Um, you you start dealing with um, our clients' children, and and um, and so you know, it is um, predominantly we do retirement planning. So the demographics of our client base, um, you know, um, probably ninety percent of them are over sixty. So yes. so that's our demographic um, as well. Yeah, I was, going to, I was going to ask you where do you like where do your clients come from? You kind of got this this growth target you mentioned, trying to get to 150 on, ongoing clients. Is that do, do you proactively ask your clients about helping someone they know, or does it just happen organically? Or what, yeah. what are you doing to try and grow those numbers? Is there anything in, anything special you're doing? Yeah, no, I mean you know we, we haven't really done much in marketing like ever. Yeah. Um, that's probably something I'm not very good at, James. Actually, but uh, and I, I don't think I've ever really asked people, um, yeah. you know, yeah. for for referrals. I've never really done that either. Yeah. Um, I've had plenty of people tell me that I should be doing that. Um, I've, um, I, I actually um, also realised that I should be getting Google reviews as well. well so I, I do have something in my emails now to do that, um, but you know. Like we we tend to have enough um, 
sort of um, demand for our service without doing too much um, active marketing. Uh, if I really, really wanted to grow the business a lot, um, I guess we could do that. It's just never really been the way we've we've worked. Yeah. That, that then creates other problems as well. Like, you know, you're, you're 100 plus clients already anyway. There's only so many more that you can look yeah. after. If all of a sudden you decided to do some marketing and, and it clicked for whatever reason, you're going to swamp yeah. yourself and then uh, uh, then you can't. You, you can't help all of these extra people that want your help anyway. You get you kind of get stuck. Yeah, I think I think uh, if we actually um, did get to the stage of bringing on another advisor, which I think we will do in the next year or so, um, I could we could probably do some marketing and we could increase, um, you know, the um, the appointments uh, at that point. But I'm not really, uh, as you say, I'm not really a, in a position to be increasing the number of clients rapidly now anyway because we're already sort of um, capacity is already an issue so yeah, yeah. You, you've, you've mentioned tech a couple of times as we've been chatting can you can you just talk through the different things that you that you're using now like you mentioned x x plans yeah. is there any other bits of technology you're using um oh well, well actually we I, I use all sorts of different software, but uh, and your tech stack can kind of get out of control. But one of the things that I've tried to do is um, is use as few as possible because otherwise it just becomes confusing. So we try and get Xplan to do as much as we can. We put a lot of work into process design and the the threads and tasks and all of that. So we use Xplan as much as we can. Um, I'm learning more about um, Microsoft Teams, the pretty powerful software. Um, Oh, 12, 18 months or so ago, we, we spent quite a bit of money upgrading the cybersecurity of um, our practice, as as all advisors, you know, have to do. Um, yeah. And and so we've got the the you know the the Microsoft um, security suite, but um, but yeah, Microsoft tools very fairly powerful um, software, and and so you know if we can X plan looking after as much as we can, and then use. Um, the Microsoft tools, um, you know, I think, um, I think, you know, that's the sort of technology that yeah. that we want to use, or and you know, build as many automations in as possible. Like everyone, I mean, we're using a, um, a, a AI a, a little bit more, um, you know, to 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 sort of you know, uh, sort of draft articles and and things like that. Um, oh yeah, to help you with your like a newsletter yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, that's right. We have, we have a monthly newsletter, and I often do videos for that. Um, fortunately, having um, technology um, sort of capable um, sons, they set me up with my video, <laughs> and and I just record. I press this button, record that, and then they edit it for me. So so I'm very lucky um, to be able to do that. But it's good. Like I think video is good, and I love obviously love some of your videos, James, that you do yeah. on, on. I'm not on TikTok. I'm not on TikTok, by the way. So, um, <laughs> but, I have to post it on LinkedIn so you can see it. Yeah, I think videos for our newsletters, and I'll, I'll do videos for our monthly newsletters quite a lot. I think uh, video is good because you're, uh, you know, it's not just reading an article; it's actually um, listening to your advisor um, speaking, and and so I think it's to me it's a bit more engaging. So I think that's it's good to do that. Yeah. So yeah, and what's on the What's the what's the future plan? So you you know you you've mentioned trying to get to 150 ongoing clients. Maybe the need for for another advisor. Is there anything else that's on your your kind of vision board? The the plans for the future? Yeah, yeah. Look, look not really. I mean, I I guess um I've got a five year plan in place that we established earlier this year. I'm uh, very lucky to have Kylie working with me. So we're we we think we um are a good sort of in a good position to 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 um to grow the business at a at a good sustainable level like yeah. um just enjoying what we do and and um like we don't have any sort of plans beyond growing to the point that where we can bring on another advisor and and um and you know and, and some more resources um yeah. you know i mean it's kind of also has been thinking about legacy as well like you know um um you know some advisors will sell their business and leave and then that'll be it. But I kind of have this funny sort of, um, it's not an obsession, but it's sort of, I'd, I'd like to be in Budrum in, in 15 years' time and see Wealth 21 still, you know, still an advice practice here and, and yeah. kind of I'd, I'd be 
kind of I think I'd feel quite proud that I built something that's that's had a lasting sort of presence in in our community. I think that's important. Um, like, I don't know. I don't know whether anyone else feels like that, but it's kind of important to me. That um, come, comes across in some of the things that you've, that you've explained already. This idea, that, you know, you're, you're 60, you're still trying to grow, you're thinking about bringing another advisor in to take over the, the clients, whereas a different mindset that someone else might have had is, I will try and build this to 150 ongoing clients. Our ongoing revenue is more. It's then worth more to sell, and you just put the whole thing up for sale and, and, and walk away. But you, they, yeah. you wouldn't be trying to get another advisor in and so forth if, if you're doing that. So that's clearly not your intention yeah, um, with it, and hopefully, yeah, the the the, the wealth twenty one sign still still hanging there for for another twenty something years. Yeah, that'd be that'd be pretty cool, I reckon. But uh, and I, you know, even I don't, I'm not against the idea of um sort of still having a part ownership in the business for a little mm. while and work maybe working part time um, yeah. while my health's good. I, I I enjoy a bit of golf as well. I'd like to play a bit more golf, but um my handicap's rubbish at the moment, so um I need to do some work there. So, um, yeah, a bit, bit more golf, a bit more hiking, and yeah. uh, and a little less yeah. work is on the cards by the sense of things. <laughs> yeah, a little, little more travel. I mean, we do love our, our um, hiking. I was just chatting to my doctor this morning. He's just come back from the Andes and he was telling me about that. So, that, that sounds pretty interesting. So, um, yeah. 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 Well, Paul, thanks for joining me this afternoon. Pleasure speaking with you. Thanks for, for sharing your bit of a journey. As I said, it, uh, I think there's a, there's a lot for, for some of the younger people that are just starting out, setting out um, on their own business, and you've you've been doing it for a while, so Paul, thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity, James. Thanks very much. No worries.